Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'll just start it uh, uh, right away. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal musalim. Wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa jama'i. Rabbi shrahli suri wa yasirli amri wa hlu gata min lisani ya tu qawli. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Uh, well, as I told you, uh, as I told you earlier, uh, this is the first time that we are having uh, uh, an, a speaker all the way from the US. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm surprised that we are having about 56 parties first now. It's very early today in Malaysia. It's seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Haifa, um, may I introduce uh, you to us? We are uh, a Beautiful Life Center team. Um, and, and actually, we are a small group, uh, USRA group, um, uh, about 80 to 100 of us that we started this uh, uh, group uh, due after the first COVID uh, pandemic, COVID MCO 2020. It's okay. led uh, by Buan Noriha. And uh, as for today's session, we are opening for the public. and. Alhamdulillah, we have five, uh, 58 participants. May I introduce uh, yourself uh, to the team and everyone else uh, uh, for sharing. We are honored to have you as our guest today. And uh, just a briefly uh, introduction about Dr. Haifa. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Dr. Haifa, I'm so... Um, so honored. I mean, I'm so, mashallah. But as I'm reading your profile, you are a gynae by profession who is also an active da'iq and a hafiza, mashallah. Um, love in knowledge is undoubtful. And the, the Haifa began to study with uh, various Islamic uh, scholars and attended courses and lectures uh, in search of uh, Islamic knowledge in depth. And she oh, yeah. even went. Yeah. to Saudi Arabia, yeah. where she graduated from the Mecca Institute of Islamic Studies, uh, Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, and Al Huda a Quran Memorization School, uh, where she completed the memorization of the Quran. Uh, Dr. Haifa is the founder and chairman of Jannah Institute, and currently teaches seminars on the thematic commentary of various chapters of the Holy Quran, and their practical relevance in our day-to-day -day living, insha'Allah, and an inspiration. Um, so uh, for today's session, I guess uh, we haven't fixed any specific topic, uh, and we are open it, uh, to you to share uh, about your spiritual journey, uh, as much as uh, most of us. I mean, the idea of our group of Usra is uh, to focus on our Quran spiritual journeys to get closer. We are groups of uh, every, I mean, uh, ladies mostly. Uh, we are mothers, we are students, we are, we have, uh, 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 I mean, uh, friends, uh, uh, profession, every, every professions. And we just know that we want to connect with the Quran. So I'll just pass uh, because we have one hour, inshallah. Uh, if there's any question, we'll uh, get it uh, at the end of the session. But for the time being, I'll just pass uh, this, uh, the screen to you. All right. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أن يعود بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I mean it's an honor جزاكم الله خير it's so beautiful this is the beauty of Islam, when we get connected for no other reason than the words of Allah, 
and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You live in Malaysia, which is thousands of miles where I live. I live in the middle of United States of America. We call it Midwest, St. Louis, Missouri. I have visited Malaysia, but very quickly. I spent only six hours. I had a layover. And it's a beautiful country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect it. Beautiful mosques. I was able to do a tour in the mosques there. And it's beautiful. And I love the people of Malaysia. May Allah keep you this way. Ya Rabbi, I mean, and I really mean this. I am not saying this because I'm speaking to you and you're Malaysian. And I lived, as you probably, some of you know, or if you read my bio, I lived and I studied in Saudi. So I lived in Jeddah. And alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me to visit his house many times. I mean, you live very close, so you go for Umrah. And I... Yani always, always the people that catch my eyes in the women area are the women of Malaysia. Dressed beautifully, very organized, humble, um, soft spoken. La uzakikum ala Allah, as we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us. I'm not praising you because nobody worth the praise except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Sometimes we have to remind ourselves, before I get into the subject, we need to remind ourselves of the blessings that Allah gives us and not look at what others have and I don't. Um, so don't look at, oh, they, she, she lives in America. Oh, they live. No. Allah gave you a lot of blessings. Count it and be grateful to it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran, and inshallah, most of you are familiar, if not all of you. And Allah said this in Surah Ibrahim, the chapter Ibrahim. You are grateful, I'll give you more. You are ungrateful, my punishment is severe. And we don't know what is the punishment of Allah. And personally, I think one of the Punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he when I don't know the value of what I have, the ni'mah of Islam, the, the blessings of being a Muslim, the blessings of being a Muslim woman, the blessings of being a Muslim practicing woman, the blessings of being a woman, Muslim, practicing and wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of a Muslim practicing woman wants to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also through his words, whether in the journey of learning, whether already learned alhamd, memorized alhamdulillah, or in the group to learn. All these are blessings. And I always remind myself before anyone, you know, the term that we all use, count your blessings. It's actually an Islamic concept. Is an Islamic concept to count your blessings. And Allah said it in the Quran. We're talking all about Quran. And Allah said it in a different way to remind me and you of how many blessings he gave me and you. And he said it twice. One in Surah An-Nahl, the bees, and the other one in Surah Ibrahim also. Both start the same way. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا if you want to count the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to. Same. But the ending is different. Subhanallah. Surah Al-Nahl, chapter the bees, which the other name of it, not official name, but what, because of what it includes, they call it Surah Al-Ni'am, the chapter of blessings. And Allah says, if you try to count the blessings, you will not be able. In Allah ghafur, la ghafur rahim Allah is all forgiving and merciful. And why? Because he gives me and he gives you. And how grateful we are. Well, I am grateful. I'm saying this to myself. And I was like, really? You're grateful? How many times you have complained today? And how many times you have been grateful to the whatever you have? How many times today you were so heedless? Oh, I can see. Well, that's a ni'mah. That's a blessing. Ask that person who cannot see. Of course I can see. Of course I can hear you. That's a ni'mah. That's a blessing. Ask the person who cannot see. I have an internet. Of course I have an internet. Of course I can go to Zoom. Ask that person who doesn't have an internet. Doesn't know what even Zoom means. Let alone learn online. 
all these blessings as you started. Start counting your blessings, living in a Muslim country, living in a country that wants you to practice your deen, and let alone woman. And don't be fooled, and I use this word, by the fake beauty of this dunya, of this life. The fake, the not real, the hidden ugliness of this dunya and the fake beauty of this dunya. Don't be fooled at all. On the contrary. And the only way for you and me to stay on this path, stay on the straight path, and don't go right and don't go left, is and only is, is by holding to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah, as they call it, the rope of Allah, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all, almost all the scholars, Abdullah al-Mateen, as Rasulullah s.a.w. said to us, the, the tight robe of Allah, scholars tell you it's the Quran. The Quran. What is the Quran? What is the Quran? We have to come to the basics sometimes. Yani literally basics. So you will, the more you start with the basics, the more you will find out, oh, wow, this is how it is. Why didn't I know that? What is the Quran? What is that book that all of us, alhamdulillah, know and read and want to memorize? And we looked up to those people who knows it, and I want to get to this class or that class or this halaqa. What is it? The first thing I want to share with everybody. And I'm going to say it in Arabic, and I'll translate it. And hopefully some of you, if you know Arabic, you will feel it even more. Kalam Allah. The words of Allah. The words of Allah. Not my word. Not yours. Not the word of the most famous writer who got the Pulitzer Prize, or this prize, or that prize. All these, all of us, are creation of him. It's his words. Kalam Allah. Look at this, number one. I see what's going to happen to your heart. Kalam Allah. Al-Munazzal ala abdi or ala nabiyyih. That was sent down to his servant or his messenger. How? Through his angel. Al-Mutawatiru fi sanadi. That it came uninterrupted chain, uninterrupted chain. The Quran you have in Malaysia is the same Quran I have in the States. And the Quran your mother had in Malaysia is the same Quran my mother had overseas. And the Quran your grandmother had is the same of my grandmother who came from Turkey. And the Quran in Turkey, the oldest version of the Quran we have in Turkey is the same as mine and yours. Maybe the writing is different, but it's the same words. Al-Mutawatir came to us uninterrupted chain. Al-Maktubu bayna dafatay al-Masahaf. It's written between the two covers of the Quran, of the book. And the most important one. Al-Muta'abbadu bitilawatih. It's an act of worship when you read it. It's an act of worship when you read it. You need to change this. You need to pay attention to this. Add this to your vocabulary. Act of worship is not only salah. Amazing. But it's not only siyam, fasting, whether in Ramadan, outside Ramadan. Most beloved deed to Allah, but that's not it. Zakah or charity, giving money, helping people, helping the poor. Very precious and highly valuable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that's not it. Look at when you are going to pick up the Mus'haf, the Quran, sitting, opening it up. Number one is the words of Allah. Hada kalamu Rabbi. This is the word of my Lord. That's not my word. That's not yours. It's not a creation of Allah. It's his words. How did he say it? Subhanah. 
Number two, as I am opening it up, I am performing act of worship. I will be rewarded. Any act of worship is, is and will, is a, a mean and will give me rewards. The fact I opened it, the fact I, I didn't even read it yet. I just opened it. Let alone when I read it. Let alone when I struggle to understand, to read it correctly, especially if I'm studying Tajweed. Ya Allah, why I have to go through this? My tongue is used to this. Why do I have to say it this way? All the struggle, all the struggle to learn it, to memorize it, to understand it, and let alone to practice it is all act of worship. You will be rewarded when you and I in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will all meet him. Each one of them will meet him alone. Allah said this in Surah Maryam, chapter Mary. In my book and yours, it will be written on September 22nd. She was reviewing this chapter and she was having a hard time to remember. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Say, Ya Rabbi, make it easy. I need to review more. I need to ask Allah for forgiveness. And he will give it to me. So the journey in the, to the, with the Quran, or the journey to the Quran, any way you want to call it, number one is change how you look at the Quran. Change how you look at the Quran. It's not any other book. It's not even a book of hadith. It's the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One. Number two, what should it do to me? What did Allah tell me that this Quran should do to me? And the answer is in the Quran. You go to Surah Yunus, Jonah. Ya yuhannas, people. Not Muslims, not Malaysian, not Americans, not Middle Eastern. Yeah, you nas, everybody, people, oh people, it has been sent to you. Admonition, from your Lord, and a cure to what the chest harbor, what the chest has, wahudan guidance. وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Guidance and a loving mercy to the believer. And then, what did he say the next ayah? قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Tell them, Rasul Salam, tell them, بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ By the grace of Allah. And by his loving mercy, let them rejoice and be happy. Let them rejoice and be happy. It is way more beloved to them. It's what it should be. I'm sorry. It is much more. It is much better for them than what they are collecting. And, and these are not my words. I'm just translating. It is much better for them than what they are collecting. Look at the Quran. Look at the Quran. Number one is the words of Allah. Two, it's a cure. It's a cure. I am not feeling well. Go and read Quran. I am down. Go and read Quran. I may be sick. I have fever. Go, go to the doctor. Get medication. Get treatment. But read your Quran. Shifa, Allah said it. Admonition. When I open it, it's this words that I am reading should bring to me, should. And if it is not, I'm going to ask him to show me. This is my guide. And this is a word of admonition. Meaning, I need to remember when I, when I read. And I was like, oh, why didn't I look at it this way? Oh, that's what he's telling me. You keep asking yourself. Don't just read it like a bird with a beautiful voice, but you don't know what you're saying. 
at least one or two ayat a day. One or two, I'm not gonna say chapters. One or two basics. Learn what you are saying. What does it mean? In your own language, and then take a pause and think, what does Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim mean? What is in the name of Allah, the merciful, the gracious? What does that mean? What does that mean? Simply, everything happens in my life. Everything happens in my life. It's by his name and because of his rahmah and grace. Whether I like it or I don't like it, whether it is something I want or it's something I didn't want or I don't want, it's his rahmah. Change the way you look at the Quran. Number one, cure. We don't use it. We don't. We use it at the last resort, the last way. Shifa, cure, mawa'idah, admonition. Admonition, I need to learn from what I am reading. And keep asking Allah. You are not going to be learning it in a day or two. You will not be learning it in a month or two. It's a life journey. So what? In every step I am doing, I'm getting rewarded. What a rahmah of Allah is this? I am learning and it's curing me. It is guiding me. And at the same time, even if I'm not there yet to be guided or cured, I am being rewarded because I'm reading it. لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف ولكن أقول ألف حرف لام حرف ميم حرف as he said عليه الصلاة والسلام when he said ألف every letter you read from the Quran times ten and he said I don't say ألف لام ميم is one letter no ألف is letter لام is letter and ميم is letter I just said ألف لام ميم that's thirty cure Admonition, shifa, huda, guidance, wa mawaidatun, and admonition. Then I need to be happy. I need to be happy, and I need to remind myself. I'm telling you what we should. That doesn't mean we are there yet, but that doesn't mean we can't be there. But we need work. And the first step to reach where you want to be is you need to think of it and want it. You want to think of it, wanted, and then you work for it. Anything in your life, any one of you who has a degree, how did that happen? You slept and woke up in the morning and you had a degree? That would be great. But that's not how it is. It's usually doing what? You worked, you wanted it, planned, worked, put effort, failed, got up, Tried again, tried again, and Allah gave it at the end. But number one, you wanted. You all need, you all need this beautiful group, the group of the Quran. What a beautiful name. Number one, you really want internally, each one of you, don't say it, Allah knows. You really want to be connected with Him, Subhana, through His book. Two, or add to everything I said. Change the way you look at the Quran. The words of Allah, pure guidance. Three or four, be happy. Rejoice. He didn't say, ifrahu. Actually, he said, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Rejoice and be happy and celebrate the fact that you are in a group of Quran. May Allah make me remember these words before anybody else in the group of the Quran, when you're spending an hour or two or three in that class, don't say it's too long. Don't say I can't do it. Say, Ya Rabbi, like Alhamd, you chose me from this 1.6 billion and who I am, a sinner, and you chose me. And you chose me to be in that circle, in that circle, small or big, to learn your words. Another thing Allah taught us about the Quran in the Quran. What, is, what did he say? 
ما كنت تدري ما ما الكتاب ولا الايمان ولكن جعلناه نورا وكذلك اوحينا this is the end of سوره الشورى وكذلك اوحينا اليك وروحا من امرنا and this is how we have inspired to you وروحا soul from us Allah called the Quran soul. What does soul do? Give life. If, if somebody doesn't have a soul, he or she is dead. And Allah put the Quran as a soul. It should give me my life. Keep me going as we say it. Revive me. Make me breathe easier. Make me enjoy things more. Ruhan min amrina. ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان. You did not know. You didn't know. What is the book or what is faith? Allah saying this to Rasul عليه الصلاة والسلام. ولكن but جعلناه نورا. That's another way Allah called the Quran. We made it light. Light. نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا. Through it. By it, and it here is a Quran. By it, we will guide who we will from our servants. And you guide to Rasul. You guide to the right path. You guide to the right path. Soul, my breath, my pumping heart, my physical soul. If I can use even this word, and my spiritual soul is the Quran. And it is light that takes me, guide me. When you lose electricity or it is dark outside, what do you do? You need light. Why? To see. See what? See your way. So you don't fall. You don't stumble. You don't pass on somebody. It guides you. To safety, guides you to safety. That's what's Quran. That's what's Quran. Noor. What is Noor? It's making me see things the right way, the way Allah wanted me to see, not the way the society and the time wanted me to see. That's what's light. It opens my eyes to the right thing as right, al haq as haq, truth as truth, and falsehood as falsehood. Nooran. Quran is light. Quran is light. What else he said about the Quran? Open the second chapter. Al Baqarah, the cow. First two lines. Alif Lam Mim. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. هدن للمتقي. ذلك الكتاب. This is the book. Which book? Quran. Quran. لا ريب فيه لا ريب فيه لا ريب فيه no doubts no doubts no doubts again hudan guidance who those who have taqwa so how do i live this life how do i live this verse when i open the quran my perception of the quran it's my guidance it's my guidance However, why I am not guided? I read it every day. I know it. Because my connection with Allah needs to be corrected. للمتقين, those who have taqwa. Who are they? Those who are Allah conscious. I need to be more Allah conscious. I need to ask him to make me of those and to guide me. Hudan للمتقين. Quran, guidance to the believers even more to the those who have taqwa read read the quran read the quran and it's going to tell you how many times allah said alif lam ra tilka ayatul kitab al hakim that's the beginning of surah yunus and the beginning of surah al qamar alif lam ra we don't know what this means right tilka this ayat the verses kitab the book Al-Hakim, the wise. What does that mean to me? Mean the Quran when I open it, it has hikmah. It's full of hikmah. 
It's full of wisdom. But I don't see it, Ya Allah. I have no idea. You know why? I didn't put the enough effort. I don't ask Allah. I have, I have no doubt it is there. But I need to ask Allah to show me. And I don't have the patience to wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show me. Al-Kitab al-Hakim, meaning everything in that book, everything in that book has wisdom. There is a reason from the Hakim, mean Allah. When he tells me do, do. When he tells me don't, don't. Samia'na wa ata'na. We hear, we obey. Qalu rabbana wa qalu samia'na wa ata'na. Wufranaka rabbana. And they say, yeah, oh, our Lord, we hear, we listen, and we obey. No argue. No why. No, it's not fair. No, it doesn't work. No, we live in a different time and, and different uh, culture. It doesn't work this way. We hear, we obey. You open the Quran. The Quran tells you, lower your gaze. There's no if and but. Lower your gaze. The guidance telling you, the guiding and the guidance telling you, lower your gaze. The wise, the wise, and the book full of wisdom tells you, lower your gaze. Don't tell me it doesn't work. Nobody does it. Samia'na wa ata'na. That's how my relationship with the Quran tells me, cover, cover, cover. Well, no argument. The biggest problem we have, we have Muslims and Muslim women specifically, since I'm speaking to, to women, is argument. I'm not convinced. Convince me. But nobody else is doing it. It doesn't matter. Rasulullah was by himself. One. Only. Migrated to Medina. How many people was with him? Made Hajj. How many people were with him? 100,000. Yeah. How many Muslims now? How many Muslims? How many Muslims in Malaysia only? Learn to obey. That's what the Quran tells me, and that's what the Quran teaches me, and that's what the Quran guides me to. I need to submit to Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا. Allah said this in Surah An-Nisa. Who's better? Who's better religion? Here we are. How do I know you are better than me? I'm not going to say I'm better than you. A'udhu billah. How do I know? It's not how many rukhat you do in the night. That could be an, a, 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 a clue, but not necessarily. Because Allah said it. Woman ahsanu dina. Who's the best one who has the best religion? Who? Ya Rabbi. Who? In the Quran. Aslama wajhahu lillah. Submitted submitted his affairs to Allah. وَهُوَ muhsin And does it with ihsan, not, oh, why me, why should I do it? No, with ihsan, with, with, with willingness and beautifulness. وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا And he followed the footsteps of Sayyidina Ibrahim, who stayed on the right path, in the middle, looking for Allah only. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And because of that, Allah took Ibrahim as his close, quote-unquote, friend or ally. That's what the Qur'an teaches me. That's what the Qur'an teaches me. Look at everywhere in the Qur'an. I love the beginning of Surah Al-An'am. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal ard All praise to him. The first ayah in Surah Al-An'am chapter, uh, the chapter of the uh, 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 cattle. Alhamdulillah. All praise to Allah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض, created heavens and earth. And then, ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون. And then, those who reject, those who doesn't believe, made it equal. كفروا بربهم يعدلون. They take things that is equal to Allah. Equal to Allah. أإله مع الله. Allah said this in Surah An-Naml. The, bee, uh, the, the ants. أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ That's what the Qur'an teaches me. Another God with Allah. 
بل هم قوم يعدلون they are a people who does no justice and then Allah goes and you want to know about Allah and what he teaches me and you in the Quran just read this part of Surah Al-Naml أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا who else will respond to the one in need when he calls upon him ويكشف السوء and he removes the harm ويكشف السوء and he removes the harm أإله مع الله and with all this then you take another God with Allah. You don't remember. You forgot easy. Well, you're going to tell me, Sister Haifa, I do not worship other one with, with Allah. And I said, yes, alhamdulillah. I'm a Muslim and you are. But do we have small gods? Do I have things more important, more important than Allah in my life? That I disobey him because of it? or I prefer them, or he, or she, or it, over him. Look at your life. Look at your daily life. And see when the choices comes in. And this is a daily choice, subhanAllah. If not every minute choice. If not every hour choice. When it is between him, subhanAllah, and what I like, what I love, what I want to do, and I have to sacrifice. And which one wins? When he tells me, and I know he told me, do this in this situation, but I don't like it. It's too hard, but nobody does it. All these things. Another God with Allah. That's what the Quran teaches me. That's what the Quran teaches me. That's how it should be. My goal, my aim when I open the Quran that Ya Allah you said these things in your book I have no doubt about it I just don't see it I have no idea guide me show me take me by my hand Ya Allah Wallahi I mean every word I am saying say this to Allah in your sujood in your in the middle of the night Ya Allah take me take me to you through your words. What does it mean take me to you? Make me closer to you. Obey you easy. Focus on you. Remember you. My goal is to please you, not to please anybody else, let alone me, myself. And show me how through your, through your book. That's what the Quran tells us. That's what the Quran, you go and on and on and on. What does the Quran tell me about this life? I'lamu. أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد. No, this this is Surah Al-Hadid. The iron. No, that's what Allah is saying. إعلبوا. No, this life is but meaning everything that's going to be said. That's it. لعب. Play. And lahu, wasting of time. Ozina, beauty. What a kafurum bainakum. Collecting, competing. I have more than she, or he has more than him. What a fahurum bainakum, I'm sorry. Tafahurum bainakum, what a kafurum fil amwali wal awlad. Boostfulness between you and collecting more and more and more. Collecting more and more. That's what Allah tells me in the Quran about this life. That's what the Quran should make me look at life when I keep reading it and understand it and ask Allah to guide me through it. Then when I don't get things in life, I said, it's a joke, it's a play, it's a waste of time. And the real life is there. As he said in Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةِ and verily, the hereafter is the real life if they only knew. If they only knew. The real life is the hereafter. That's what the Quran teaches me. Open my eyes. Remove the veils. Think of it as like if you ever go to an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, and they are checking your vision. 
And if you're somebody who wears glasses and they, they usually change the lenses, right? And they're testing, do you need to change your eyeglass or you're seeing fine, right? And they keep changing. And sometimes they ask you, clear, not clear? Is that better or that's better? The Quran should be for me, let alone my eyes, is these lenses that when they put it, I see well. Oh, I see it very well. Oh, it's very clear. And if I am not, then it becomes vague. It becomes clouded as if there is a lot of mist on the window. That's for the Quran. How do I get there? This is a beautiful talk. I'm just going to give more, five more minutes and then we'll make it to questions and answers because by seven my time, I have to go because of it's Maghrib time. How do I get there? I'm going to give you a few things. Number one, a dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ja'al al-Quran rabi'a qalbi. Ya Allah, make the Quran your word. The spring of my heart. Rabia Qalbi. Spring of my heart. Dua. Number two. Love it. Love it like you love your child. Love it like you love your home. Love it like, may Allah forgive me, I'm saying like, it should be more like yourself. You do everything for yourself. What do you do for the Quran? Dua. Love it. Love it. Even pretend you love it. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to you real. Three, give it your prime time. The best time in you, you give it to the Quran. Not the leftover time. Not the leftover time of the day. I did everything. And now I have, now I'm getting on my couch. I'm just going to go and read the Quran. That's not how you, that's not how we should look at and deal with the words of Allah. That's act of worship. I give it my prime time and specific time of my day. This is for my akhirah. This is for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. It will come, but it will take time. Ask those who went through the journey of the Quran how long it took them, especially if they started that journey later in life, not when they were children, but it will come. Wallahi, it will come. But just be persistent. Be consistent. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And don't let people make you give up or put you down. Focus. This is the words of Allah. This is my path to him. This is my cure. This is my guidance. This is my light. Patient, persistent, dua. Give it your best time. And don't you ever think, ever, 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 Allah will put you down or will let you down. Never. Absolutely. Who else will give it to me but Allah? Allahumma ja'al al-Quran al-Kareem rabi'a qulubina wa jala'a ahzanina wa dhahaba humumina wa shifa'a sudurna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran the means to remove all our worries, all our anxieties, all what worries us and make us anxious and take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran that the one that will change all this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the beauty of his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make the journey with the book of Allah easy ya rabbi amin subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira jazakumullahu khairan may allah reward you alhamdulillah alhamdulillah ma sha allah what an insight uh, so uh, we do have uh, Sometimes uh, uh, we have uh, any questions, maybe one or two, if you don't mind, Dr. Haifa, can we just take a few questions from the audience? Yes, if you can, absolutely fine. If they speak English perfect or somebody can translate for them, absolutely. Yeah, I sure. still have about 
about uh, about 15 minutes because of maghrib time okay uh, oh yeah maghrib is gonna be in 15 minutes time right yes about okay. maybe a little, yeah. take 10 minutes for <laughs> inshallah so uh if uh, i'm opening to the floor see if any of the uh, uh participants have any questions if you would like to ask in Bahasa, I'll mm -hmm. try to translate it to you, inshallah. Ada siapa-siapa tak? Uh, saya nak tanya. Yes, please. Uh -uh. Yes. Um, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Haifa. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, okay, I'm so glad that I'm able to join this session today and it is a very inspiring and sort of eye-opening for me because I'm just starting my journey to Quran actually um, and um, I'm having anxiety, yeah, uh, to be honest with you now. Uh, I'm dealing with anxiety a lot and my journey just started about like one year so far and Alhamdulillah, I found a circle which helps me to go through whatever that I'm going through at the moment. And I'm so thankful that I'm able to, to hear you, uh, to listen to you as well today. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. Um, my question is because you mentioned just now about the dunya is sort of like, like a joke. I'm not, um, this is my words. I mean, this is not your words, but it's like a joke or something like, not 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 yeah, not real play. it's a play yeah it's, it's a play. play yeah so basically um how do how do we i have this sorts of um conflicting inner dialogue within me inner conflicts within me between um balancing the dunya with whatever that we we are supposed to do uh daily in life as well as like uh, as well as um carrying out our duties and jobs uh, versus oh. learning the Islam and Quran especially. Um, how do we, how, how should I balance, I mean, see how to balance things, whether I should concentrate fully on, 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 on studying Islam and learning the Quran and just live out totally on this dunya, on the pursuits of dunya. I mean, in terms of career yeah. and so okay. whatsoever. So your, your, yeah, your question is 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 very common. I wouldn't say the most common, but one of the most common questions, especially from women. How do I balance? How do I balance? I mean, I can't leave dunya completely because Allah did not want me to do that. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adha bin nar. Ya Allah, give us good in this life and good in the akhirah and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. I gave two uh, hour separate talk about this. It's called Time Management uh, Toolkit. It's on our YouTube. I don't know if you know our YouTube, it's Jannah Institute YouTube. Do they know it? And yeah. you will find it there. Yeah, you will find it there. But I'm going to summarize because of the time. Number one, and I'm going to say the same thing as I said for the for the Quran. Number one is the dua. You, I and you and we cannot do anything unless Allah make it happen. That's number one. Number two, it depends where are you in your life. And this there's no generic... Uh, answer to this question other than dua, be more efficient and put your priorities. That's the general answer. You have to prioritize what is this thing has to be done today versus, ver versus this thing can wait till tomorrow. This is how we become efficient. I'm not going to be able to do everything <clears throat> in this moment. It doesn't work this way. Specifically, I'm just going to give general, but just to if very specific situations, very common to the woman. If you are a mother, then Allah used you at this time in your life to serve him as a mother. So your priority is to take care of your children and learn what they need, what you need to teach them as a Muslim mom. If you are a grandmother now, 
right? Your children are all grown up, or you are you're, you're not necessarily grandmother, but your children are grown up, and now you are at home alone, or you are much less, or not necessarily alone, but much less responsibility. I'm going to spend more time on memorizing, studying, learning the Quran. How about my career and Islamic study? It depends. What are you doing? What is your career? Is it for Mu'ayn? Is this is an individual obligation that you have to do? Then you need to go and do that because that's how you serve Allah. Is it something that I don't have to? Can I do them both? And a lot of people can. So there's a lot of question in this. As long as what you want to do is halal, serves the Muslim ummah, ask Allah to show you the balance. But if it is not halal, don't even talk about it. If it is not going to serve the ummah, and there is way more need for Muslim educated women in their deen to teach the young generation and the other woman, then you go with that. So the balance is where Allah wants me at this moment to serve him. We are servants of Allah. نَحْنُ عِبَادُ Allah. And he puts me as a mother, that's my service to him. I'm not going to leave my children and go and study Islamic studies. That's not how he, it's not pleasing to him. He puts me as a single woman now, then yeah, use your time to learn. Balance it between your studies and your education. Islamic studies and Islamic and non-Islamic or other dunya education. Cut down on the unnecessary social media, TikTok, uh, Instagram, all these unnecessary social gatherings. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. And this is a huge problem for a lot of us. Wait, I'm not saying you are like a machine 24-7. There has to be time for you to enjoy. But during the day, be efficient of your time. And Allah will put barakah in your time, bi idnillah. Alhamdulillah. Ah, uh, okay. Can we take another one question at least? Yes. Okay, is there any other question? Kak Ain, cari soalan? Ya, sila. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Haifa. Masya Allah. Waalaikumsalam. So I have just one question regarding uh, your personal experience uh, dealing in uh, trial, test, conflict, and in the state of pandemic, how do you deal emotionally, spiritually, physically? Can you share with all of us? Just yes, sure. it, yeah, it's not about me personally. It's about how I as a Muslim woman and you as a Muslim woman should handle it. Simple. Number one, everything is from Allah. Number one, he allowed it to happen. He could have stopped it. Kun fayakun. He allowed it. So I have nothing to do with it. He decreed 2020, this earth will change by something called COVID. Our life will change. We may lose job. Children will stay home. We can't travel. Wearing mask forever. Allah knows for how long. It came from him. Second thing, me. I should always turn to him and says, what are you teaching me? What do you want me to learn from this? Three, it is the time that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we will turn then. So when people tell me there's a time for anxiety and there's a turn time for stress, I said, it's true. Of course, it's uncertainty. A lot of things change. But this is the time I turn to him more. So now after a year and a half, the question to everybody, did I change? Am I closer to Allah? Am I more connected to him? Not only necessarily only in dua or reading Quran. Am I more focused on him? That's how you deal with it. If you are connected with Allah and more and more during the time of difficulty, things will be easy because you're connected to the Qawi. You'll be very strong. You're connected to the strong. You're very strong. So everything happens in my life as I started in the beginning, whether it's a ni'mah, a blessing or a test. It all came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I need to know how to respond. Alhamdulillah. Maha kita kita boleh stop kat sini kot, ya? Minta doktor bagi conclusion for other five minutes. Okay, uh, okay, doctor, we have five more minutes. Maybe you can conclude our session for three, inshallah. 
This is what I want to say to all my beautiful sisters. As a Muslim woman, we have, and I really mean this word, we have a lot of responsibilities. We can change a lot of things by us changing because we are the guidance in the house. You need to change as a Muslim woman. Connect to Allah. Don't focus on dunya. Don't be lured by what comes from the West or comes on these magazines, or on the pictures, or the ideal things on social media. These are all fake. It's not real. It's not real. Focus on the reality. What is reality? I'm here for a short time. I'm going. Sooner or later, nobody stayed. And the real life is there. Keep this in front of you every day. And your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change. Bi'idhnillah. Jazakumullahu khayra. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. What a beautiful group. MashaAllah. hundred women. Sabarakallah. May Allah put more baraka ya Rabbi. I mean, it's a pleasure and honor to have been with you. And please forgive me for if anything I said is true is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anything I said is not true or not correct or it was offending to anybody, it is all from my weakness, my nafs, the impact of shaitan on me. I seek refuge in Allah that I remind you of him and I forget him myself. Jazakumullahu khayran. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Taifa. Uh, we wish we can have uh, more time with you, perhaps uh, another session, inshallah. <laughs> okay, we'll just May add I make it up. Uh, inshallah, I will end our session with us with Farah today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, everyone.